Our second scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 21 to 22. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and redeemer. Amen. It is my pleasure to be here with you today to be able to worship with you and for those who are joining through Zoom, and there's a lot of them. Um, <clears throat> I can see their names in some places. Um, but it's, it's my pleasure to be here. And I, I just, so I'll take just a, a tiny moment to tell you why it's called Connecticut Farms. In around 1670, people from Connecticut came down to New Jersey. And it, there was a time New Jersey was not all blacktop in this area, you know. And they thought that area uh, looked so much like Connecticut, the beautiful farmlands and hills of Connecticut. They named it Connecticut Farms. And that was the name of the town. And they worshiped at the Elizabethtown Presbyterian Church, which is First Presbyterian Church in Elizabeth, the oldest church. And, um, but then they got tired of that travel, a three mile travel. And um, in 1730 started Connecticut Farms, the, uh, it's called the Presbyterian Church of Connecticut Farms. So it's been there a while. And then in 1803 or 1808, 1808, the freeholders and their wisdom took all of Connecticut farms, parts of Roselle and parts of Elizabethtown and formed a made union. So that's why there's a Connecticut farms Presbyterian church in union. I, I know when I, when I went to that church, friends of mine said, so you're moving to Connecticut? I went, no, <laughs> Jersey girl. So anyway, I am pleased to be here with you. Um, and I do, uh, I know what it's like as a pastor to suddenly due to an illness, not be able to be there on Sunday. I mean, I'm talking like Saturday night, you're pleading, please, please, please come and hold this one. Um, so I, I just, I'm so pleased that I can do this for all of you and for Robin. And I also understand, I've had vertigo and it's, it's awful. So we lift healing prayers. Let's just think of her, you envision her and surround her in God's healing light. Okay. Tomorrow begins our first full week of Lent. I mean, we have started with Ash Wednesday and each year, each year, we all take this journey with Jesus together with each other as a community, faith community. And we each take it alone. For we as a church community, we must process and pray and meditate on what this sacrifice of Jesus means for us as a faith community. But we also have to decide as an individual, I have to decide, you have to decide, you out in Zoom land have to decide what it means for you. Over these next six weeks, we each in our own way meditate, pray, and repent asking for forgiveness. So that's what Lent is about. It's, it's in a sense, it's uh, kind of, you know, ripping off uh, the clothes and putting on sackcloth and putting ashes on our heads to think about ways that we must repent for in everything we've done and shouldn't have done or anything we said and shouldn't have said or all those things we didn't do and didn't say when we should have, when we should have. Because believe it or not, when you do not speak up when you should, you are still bearing false witness. So this is the time to get to do this. And Robin has decided, or maybe all you decided, I'm not sure that the Lenten practice over these next six weeks will be uh, looking at the seven last words of Christ. And so we begin this Lenten season with the words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So we're beginning this Lenten journey together with forgiveness. We begin with forgiveness. But as we listen to Jesus' words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Who is being forgiven here? Is it the person 
nailing in the nails? Is it the hecklers? It is not just the Romans who are responsible for nailing Jesus to the cross. It's all of us. It is our sin, and the sin that back in those days of the people that have led Jesus to the cross. So Jesus is asking for all of us to be forgiven. I don't know if any of you saw the movie, The Passion, it came out, I think, in 2000, um, the, the Passion of Christ. And Mel Gibson made this movie, as other uh, directors have done, as a way of expressing his faith and working out his own repentance, just as artists have painted and done work, as you can see on your stained glass, as a way of expressing their faith. Bach, when you look at any of his manuscripts, they begin with to the glory of God. So that was a way of his praising God. So this is how Mel Gibson was working out his faith. And one of the things he was really, really important to him was when you see uh, Christ's hands and those nails are being nailed and pounded, pounded into that cross. Those hands holding the nail and the hammer are Mel Gibson's hands. And he said that in an interview, that he wanted his hands because he knew that his sins and all of our sins put Christ on the cross. Now, if you read the whole this afternoon, if you have nothing else to do, and read that whole chapter of Luke 23, because it will begin, and I'm, you know, we're at this point, Jesus is on the cross. But before we got here, Jesus had been interrogated by the Sanhedrin, by Herod, by Pilate. He was beaten. His clothes were torn apart. They were sold and well actually gambled off, as you read in the passage today. And now he's hanging on this cross between two thieves. Being crucified on the cross is the most horrible death. And the closer you get to Easter, you'll probably hear how horrible it really truly is. And he's on the cross as being mocked and jeered and heckled. And he opens his mouth to speak. You know, and they're screaming, if you're a king of the Jews, save yourself. You know, if you're son of God, save yourself. He opens his mouth and says, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. He's full of compassion. Now, I want you, I'm going to give you about two seconds because that's all it takes is when was the last time you have been hurt by someone's actions or maybe their words, perhaps humiliated at a session meeting, humiliated publicly at work or where? Did you offer forgiveness right away? Or did it take time? Or maybe you didn't do it at all. Um, you know, I kind of laugh at, you know, we read the Matthew passage where Jesus tells the disciples, you are to forgive not seven times, but 70 times seven. Now, those, how many of you are on Facebook? Anybody here on Facebook? There is a little cartoon that's on Facebook and Jesus is, is talking to the disciples and says, uh, and they're talking about forgiveness and they say, how many times do we do it? Seven times? He goes, no, 70 times seven. And one of the disciples turns to the other one and says, great. Not only are we to forgive, now we have to do math. <laughs> and you see, I don't know about you, but sometimes these things that Jesus says, love your enemies, forgive those who hurt you. It's really annoying. You know, I mean, it, don't you, it's, it's not only difficult, but if it can be like, I, I just don't want to do that right now. I just want to smack him silly. But you see, because we follow Christ, we are to forgive. Now, that doesn't mean that it's not cheap grace. You just don't say, oh, it's good. It does may take time. But this is the good news. We don't have to do it alone. We have a Savior who hung on the cross because of us and asked for forgiveness for us. Look at what's happening in the world today. There is so much going on right now that is awful. There's evil happening right now to people in this world. And yet Jesus is saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Now, some of us might look at what's happening over the Ukraine and say, Russia knows exactly what it's doing. 
but we are to pray for them. We are to say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do, and also pray for all of the Ukraine. We, for everything that happens in this world, for the hunger for the little children who are starving, for all that is happening in the world at our hands because of our greed, our lust, our poor power. And I'll, I'm using that inclusively, even though it's, you know, it's not you and not. But Jesus is the one who would be saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And that is what we are to say. There are times we can't even forgive ourselves, let alone somebody else. And sometimes we, we can forgive somebody else, we just can't forgive ourselves. We want Christ to forgive us, but we can't forgive us. So this week coming up of Lent and all of time, but particularly this week, because this is this, these are the words of Christ. And in Luke, they're the very first words he says on the cross, even before he tells the, the two, the one thief that you will be with me in paradise. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what to do. So this week of Lent, it is time to ponder this passage, this forgiving Jesus, and say, how could he do that? How can I do that? For I claim to be a Christian, which means I am a follower of Christ. How can I do that? And the good news is you don't need to do it alone. It's just a prayer away. But this is the week where you sit. Maybe you set your clock. You know, many times during that, people say, or they give up things. And they usually say to me, because I love dark chocolate. Are you, are you going to give up chocolate? And I, I tell them, and I tell them the truth. I do not believe in giving up major food groups. Okay? It's an antioxidant. It's healthy for you. But have you ever thought of adding on during lunch instead of taking something away? Adding on an extra 10 minutes of devotion with time with God every day. And it doesn't have to be, you know, a whole hour or 20 minutes. It's time to, two minutes to just sit and breathe in and breathe out. And so Jesus, Savior, Son of God, have mercy on me. And contemplate what Jesus' love has done for you. This is the beginning, the time to look inward, to offer our repentance, to offer our forgiveness to others and to ourselves, and to meditate on what it means to be forgiven by Christ. Because if you do that, you will change. There's no way you can sit with Christ and with God and ponder and repent and be forgiven and not be different. Because if you're not, then you truly have not repented. So we meditate. So this is the week. We sit and we, we sit with these words. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. As we come to the table today to be fed, we offer up to Christ our confessions, our repentance. We come to partake of this bread and this cup and receive the grace of God. As we are forgiven, we are forgiven as we are fed. See, I think this is this wonderful. It's, it's not only are we forgiven, but God plays host at this table. Christ plays host. Christ is always playing host if you look at the Bible. So as we come to this table, offer up silently. Offer up to God. Offer up to Christ. What it is you need help with. Bring it to the table. I don't know about you, but the one I grew up, it was delightful. I, now I look back, and I did it with my children, and now I look back and I think, wow, we, I just thought that was just part of everybody did that. But, you know, it was a wonderful part of life. Where after dinner, we all sat around and talked. We found out what my mother's day was like, what my dad's was like, what my brother's was me. We argued, you know, we had laughed, we did, but we talked. Yeah, and we brought things to the table. When the whole family would get together, Christmas, Easter, birthdays, whatever, we all just sat and talked around the table. Well, here's our table. God provides a table. Christ is here, ready to talk. And, and speaking of ready to talk, I understand that if any of you do want time to talk in the prayer room, there is always someone there, if that's not true. 
No, never mind. But you could go in by yourself <laughs> and just sit and pray. Um, so as we come to this table, and as you go about your week, sit with these words, Father, forgive them. Those are the words that we are to be saying to ourselves. Help me forgive myself. Help me forgive others. Let us, let us pray. Lord, you gave us so many commandments, well, actually, just a few love your neighbor as yourself, forgive each other. It seems so easy, but it's not. So we come today to worship you. We come asking for forgiveness for ourselves and for those that, that are in need of forgiveness. We come to this table, O oh Lord, offering up ourselves. We come with great thanksgiving. Be with us this week as we ponder your words, your words of compassion and grace. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Amen.